I'm gonna show you in this story how people are throwing petty at me left and right, but I go out of my way to not be petty back. So today's video is mostly me venting, hello. And I wanted to talk about the insistence of petty interactions that I've been subjected to. <laughs> In actuality, the trials that keep coming up in my life in recent history, a lot of them revolve around people being petty towards me. And I want to talk about one of those today. In my community where I live, um, we pay an HOA. We pay an HOA and there are certain standards that come with that. So I get a letter in the mail a couple weeks ago, and I would say like a month and a half ago at this point. It says, first notice dust and debris on the side of your home basically saying it's like a corrective thing that I have to do to my home so I was confused because I'm like what are they talking about now keep in mind three walls of the house are brick and then there's a small sliver on the side that connects to the house next to it that is like a siding material and you and that's why I can't stand siding because it gets dirty and whatever from the natural elements of like dust and debris like it was talking about in the notice now I moved into my home a year and a half ago, and I'm just now getting this notice. So then I'm sitting here thinking, the siding of my home has looked like this since before I purchased it. I moved into this house a year and a half ago, so why am I just now getting this notice? So my whole thing is, if it were a violation, why wouldn't it have been a violation for the past owners? Because it already looked like that. So I'm thinking, like, y'all have to show me proof that y'all were sending notices to, the, to them or that they got fined for it because why am I suddenly being targeted for it? And that's not me being, like, confrontational. That's me being realistic because they're asking me to get power washing done in my home. And a plot twist, I had just spent, you know, I just spent not even joking two thousand dollars on unexpected home repairs and a car repair this past month before i spent even more money on a week of pto in texas i wasn't in the position to just throw money at something when there was no real reasoning behind it or valid valid reason behind it it's i don't keep a dirty home the inside of my home is clean and so is the outside i trim my hedges i do all that stuff so to just have that specific little note sent to me especially because my house sits at the end of like a cul-de-sac so the only people who would ever even see the side that particular side of my house are the three houses on the other side and really not even all of them just my neighbors my neighbors where that wall is attached to them so then within 30 seconds of looking at the note and having that initial like rage about it my conclusion is that okay so my neighbors reported me so um, little backstory on my relationship with my neighbors. It was fine as far as I was aware. We never exchanged numbers, but we met one another and it's a couple. They seem really nice. In the few exchanges I've had with them, it, it's like a hi, how was your day? In terms of like being nice neighbors, um, one time I helped the husband jump his car because his wife was not home and he couldn't get it to start and he had to go somewhere. So he asked very politely, I offered to help him out. And then there have been, I believe, three times at max in the past year and a half where I'm pretty sure the husband like took my trash bin from the front of my driveway and put it back in the area after trash pickup. And that wasn't because I had like left the bin out for multiple days. I think it was just they were being nice or it could have been my other neighbor. I have no idea. So that's the backstory with the neighbors. Like we're cool. So I get this notice telling me like I need to fix it or um, the assumption there is that I'm going to get charged for violating the HOA. So then I'm like, okay, no. <laughs> because y'all waited too long at this point to say something. My neighbors waited too long to say something. And other upsetting part about it is that I know for a fact that the previous homeowners were Caucasian. Why did I say Caucasian? I know that the previous homeowners were white. I move in, I'm black, my neighbors are black. And I'm like, why did... <laughs> We're supposed to stick together. You couldn't you couldn't send the violation to them when they lived next to you for years, but you had to wait till I moved in. This young person who's trying to make her way. <laughs> I was like, this is ridiculous. And my intuition was telling me it was the wife specifically who reported me. I'm not just saying that because I'm like, oh, this 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 woman, like it's nothing like that. But let's just say I know that there's one person in the neighborhood who for sure is part of the HOA whatever like board and I've seen them walking together multiple times like they're buddies So that is why I'm guessing that so I'm getting this notice and I'm like, okay So now that now that y'all want to be petty towards me 
now I have to sit here and bring up real issues that have happened while I've been living here that I have not complained about because I just wanted to keep the peace. Um, but now since y'all want to target me, when I say y'all, I mean my neighbor and I mean the HOA. Since y'all want to target me, and I use that word seriously, I don't mean it like in a jokey jokey way because I feel like I was being targeted. Um, I'm going to like bring to light some of the actual issues. So then I call the HOA. I'm like, hey, I got this notice about dirt on the side of my house, but like I have some actual issues that I need to discuss with you. <laughs> and I was real st strategic with my words, you know? And I was like, and this is what I'm about to say is true. Like none of this is exaggerated. This is all true. Like they got, I sent them evidence. I was like, I actually want to talk to you because I had to leave a voicemail. I was like, I actually want to talk to you because there's these two women that babysit like seven kids in this neighborhood and at least twice a week that I know of, at least twice a week, they're running around in my backyard, um, bothering the nature. There's a lot of animals that live in this neighborhood. They're bothering the animals. They're swinging on electrical equipment outside of my house. I have watched them move items out of the my neighbor's yard and move them around two of the boys these are and also these are like all little kids these are like none of them are o o older than like six <laughs> and then there's like babies one day two of the little boys were eating snacks sitting on my porch like, in front of my door and they were like standing on my electrical equipment eat, drinking water bottles on top of electrical equipment like literally oh playing hide and seek around my car like literally <laughs> This happened multiple times and I never reported it. But here I am getting reported for some siding. So I'm like, okay, no, I'm gonna let y'all know what's going on in this neighborhood. So I tell them about that and I'm like, also there's a huge pothole when you come in the neighborhood that's been here for the whole year and a half I've lived here. There's also a new pothole on the exit when you jump out of the neighborhood. There's only one way in and one way out of my neighborhood. So I'm like, so y'all wanna come at me for this, but let me talk to y'all about, cause y'all are charging me fees, what's happening? <laughs> I'm like, if y'all want to pay to clean the side of my house, I feel like that's more appropriate at this point, considering y'all don't fix any of the, the issues in this neighborhood. So I left the voicemail. It wasn't a hype voicemail. It was very, like, professional, whatever. Like, I put on the little voice. You know, you got to put on a voice for people. And then I did not get a phone call back. I noticed these people refuse to call you back. They want everything in writing. And I'm like, okay, we can have things in writing because that's not going to work out in your favor either. So, oh... And the other thing I told them is, yeah, these new people just moved in across directly across the street from me. And my neighborhood has guest parking sections because the driveways are small and you can't the streets are so narrow. You can't just park in the street. So this person had been having guests like park in the street directly in front of my driveway, which left me just enough room to get out. But I back into my driveway, which I have the right to do. And I <laughs> sound like a Karen, but I couldn't back into my um, driveway when this would happen because of the way they blocked it. it. They emailed me back and they were like, please send us proof of this, 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 and this, and we'll definitely handle. So I'm like, oh crap, because I never took pictures or did anything like that because I was never planning on reporting any of this, but because they wanted to come for me, I had to come for them. And again, I was being targeted in a very petty way by my neighbors. The way I responded was not, this wasn't me being petty back. This was me saying, these are real issues that I chose to be an adult about and get over because people are people and you live in a neighborhood and things happen. But because you want to come for me, now I'm forced to point these out. So God blessed me. And I was like, how am I going to get evidence of this? Literally the next day, like the neighbor had someone park right in front of my house in this huge car. So it was like the perfect example of how they weren't using guest parking, which is also in the photo. Um, and then I never knew where the children lived that were getting babysat because why would I? And it just so happened the next day after getting that email, I was driving into my neighborhood and I saw them go into the house. It sounds like I'm being a, a creeper, but it literally was just like a natural occurrence. So I sent in all the evidence and they're like, okay, we'll handle it and blah, blah, blah. Then I get a second notice for the side of my house and I'm like, ah! <laughs> Because like I said, I had just spent, I'm not kidding, I just spent over $2,000 on repairs that were unavoidable. And I was getting really stressed out at the fact that I was have, now being forced to spend money cleaning the side of the house just so my neighbors could be appeased. And let's get to the point of what I'm thinking here. I think the wife was just being petty and trifling and she doesn't like me for whatever reason. I just can't see a reason why you would go out of your way to do that after a year and a half. If you had told me right when I moved in that it was an issue, that's fine. But for it to be this random occurrence, I'm like, what's your issue with me? Do you have a problem because I jump-started your husband's car? So anyway, 
a couple days before no this was right after I got back from my trip to Texas a few weeks ago I have a note on my car from the wife she wrote hey can we use your hose hookup at the front of your house like the water connection so that we can clean the side the side of the house like um thanks and then that was the 100% confirmation that it was you who reported me. So not only were you trying to be petty and trying to get me charged or trying to get me to pay to clean, basically, it's the wall of my house, but y'all, it's the, it's the side of their house because you only see it if you're going to their house. Again, I would have cleaned it because I know it is technically my property if you asked me when I moved in. So... I knew it was them who reported me, or I knew it was her that reported me at that point, because she was also the one who wrote the note and signed her name. So I'm like, you're shooting yourself in the foot here because you just exposed yourself for being a trifling neighbor. I wrote on the note, sure, sure, you can use a hookup exclamation point. I was like, I'm going out of town the next few days, so you'll have like, there's room for you to connect it. So I get back from vacation, or I get back from a work trip that was right after Texas, and then I come back and I notice that she did not clean this out of the wall. I was like, okay, here we go. Like, because I know her husband had to have seen the note because I replied on the note, took a picture of it. I replied on the note and then I put it back on her front steps. And I know, like, for a fact that her husband, like, pulled up home before she ever came back outside. So I know he saw the note. At this point, I don't even know if he knew that she reported me. A couple more days had passed, and then this past weekend, or like, yeah, about a week ago, um, they're like spraying the side of the house because they had finally hooked up the hose and like started spraying it down. Now, you may be thinking too, okay, Ariel, like instead of sending all these emails and like making it harder on, harder on yourself, because here's the thing, guys, I'm always just going to stand up for myself. It's okay if it's a little bit harder and more tedious. I'm going to stand up for myself. Um, and advocate for myself. So you may be thinking, Ariel, if all your neighbors had to do was spray it with the hose, why didn't you spray it with the hose? The violation told me I was required to get a power wash on the side of the house based on the violation because my house is very tall. So you cannot clean the, that whole side of the house with a hose. You would have to have someone come out and power wash, get on the roof, etc. So what my neighbors did when they sprayed it with the hose is, yeah, they cleaned most of the siding that was what they could access at that front of the house. They did not power wash or spray what was all up above. I'm satisfied because I'm like, that's clearly what you were complaining about. So they spray it down. It probably took them, I would say I heard them spraying for like 20 minutes. <laughs> 20 minutes. So all this time, if this was bothering you so much, you could have... You could have, from the very start, just asked to use my water hookup and spray the side of the house. Or, like I said, when I moved in, asked me to clean it, okay? So, they spray it. It's nice and clean now. It, it, all this stuff that happened, like, never needed to happen. I come out of the house one day, get a, have another note on my car. Oh, because here's the thing. She had her husband spray the side of the house, <laughs> which I'm like, I know he was like, this is ridiculous. But, you know, that's, that's your old marriage. <laughs> So I heard him from my kitchen saying to his wife, you need to talk to Ariel and get her cash app so we can pay her for the water we're using. <laughs> Which completely confirmed to me that he did, He was not a part of this. It was all her. It was all her. Because why would he then be telling his wife, like, we need to pay Ariel to have clean this? If, if he was one of the ones who reported me trying to get me to clean it for, for, with my own money. Then, like, two days later, I have a note in my car from his wife. It's like, hey, Ariel, like, can I get your cash app so we can pay you for the water we use? I don't need y'all to cash at me for what probably came out to, like, three, maybe four dollars, probably not even that, worth of water you sprayed on the side of the house. I don't care. I did not respond to the note because I was just busy, but then, like, the next day, I walked outside and she happened to be outside. She was like, hey, Ariel, I'm like, hi. And then I say, like, I don't even, I don't even, like, I'm not going to engage in pettiness with you. I said, hey, I got your note about, um, about paying me for the water. I was like, I don't need that. That's fine. I'm good. And I was, like, smiling. I, I, I didn't give her attitude. And then she goes, oh, okay, you sure? You sure? You sure? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you're good. And then she goes, yeah, because it was a lot of work having to spray that down. What does that have to do with? me needing money for the water that has nothing to do with that and then also girl you want to play this petty game like it was a lot of work you didn't do anything <laughs> your husband was spraying it down and that's a lot of work to squeeze a hose y'all <laughs> and I can laugh at that because I am someone who's very self-sufficient and has to do a lot of home needs on my own that are a lot of work and for her to say some dumb shit, 
<laughs> like that I was like I was done so I was like oh <laughs> I didn't even respond I was like whatever so then that was the end of that saga so this video has turned out so much longer than I thought it would. What kind of payoff are you getting when you're being petty? Like, what are the dividends? <laughs> what you're getting is um, strained relationships. You're getting called out for being um, fraudulent and fake. Because I always thought these people were cool, but now I have to look at you with a side eye. And then you're potentially putting yourself at risk to deal with somebody who operates at a much higher level of pettiness. And I say that because, y'all, before I had the connection through my faith with God to start to reset because I'm still resetting but before I had the ability to start to reset I was somebody who could could be very petty, petty could be very manipulative if I chose to do so I'm not choosing that path so that's my little rant that's my little rant for the day um I don't know how productive this conversation is more so I just wanted to share something get it off my chest I read this fortune cookie the other day and it said a clear conscience is a com is the most comfortable pillow and that's how I'm starting to feel and to be honest hint hint in the next couple of weeks I'm probably gonna have a lot more free time on my hands to record videos and I'm gonna be clearing my conscience about a lot of stuff and <laughs> removing the stigmas and shame that come with um, holding back on truth that you're just too scared to share like you're operating out of fear so I'm sick of doing that and there's gonna be a lot of things that I get to speak on that I just have told myself like oh you shouldn't speak on in the past like that's over with I'm, I'm past that uh, thanks for watching this video please subscribe and then hopefully the next video won't be as negative <laughs> thanks